First here at five o'clock, we have to talk about the massive wildfires. They are still burning. I mean, it's just incredible video to see. Still burning in the Texas Panhandle tonight. The largest is the Smokehouse Creek fire. It has now scorched about 850,000 acres, and it's only 3% contained. And the video and the sound that we hear in the video tells so much of the story. Winds, dry grass fueling the massive wildfire. Livestock and first responders in some cases racing from the walls of flames and smoke. Since Monday this week, that fire has exploded in size. Now the second largest wildfire in Texas history. Governor Greg Abbott this afternoon deploying even more resources and people to the region to help. We do know at least 20 homes and buildings have burned, and thankfully, on top of that news, no reports of any injuries or deaths. That is good news. One of the towns, though, that was surrounded by that fire yesterday is the town of Canadian. It's about an hour and a half northeast of Amarillo. We've got Dave Malikoff with the CBS Innovation Lab just making it to Canadian. Dave, can you tell us what you're seeing right now? Nicole, it was really heartbreaking as we drove through here. This is what's left of Teresa Rankin's home. Not just her home, but her whole family grew up here. They had several weddings here. They would throw lavish parties. 38 years they have been here. But last night as the fire was coming through, she couldn't even get out of the neighborhood. She tried to evacuate. There was a mandatory evacuation order. They were telling her to get out, but she tried to do that. The main road is shut down. As we were driving through here, they actually had dozens of spot fires around us, and we could see how it was burned right up to the natural fire break, which would be the road that we were on. But the charred road just came right up to there. This is what we're seeing all over the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. It's really a rough scene when you think about not only the people who have lost their home, like the Rankins here, but also the livestock. Many uh, cattle ranchers were letting their livestock loose to try to get away from the flames. We heard about deer jumping over the flames and trying to get away from here. But as we were driving through, Nicole, it was really sad scene when we saw the cattle. They were all dead around the, us as we were driving through. There, there were, I don't know, dozens of them. It was, it was really, really rough to see. Yeah, Dave, such a tremendous impact. And, and the description of it feeling like Armageddon, I, I imagine that's a sense you're getting there. Is there's just such a difficult trickle-down effect of what we're seeing from the wildfires. Yeah, we're, we're in a warmer world. We have all this dry brush that's around us. It's not very hilly in this area, but it was going pretty fast on the ground as the brush was fueling the flame. And Teresa said that what burned down her house here and just left it to just all of this dust and ash was a rolling, flaming, a uh, tumbleweed that was coming through the neighborhood, and that was normally these fires are set by embers that go from home to home, and they get under the eaves and they set each house on fire. But this is the first time, and I've been covering wildfires for a long time, mm -hmm. that I've heard of a rolling, tumbling weed that was kind of like a ball of fire just going through the neighborhood, setting yeah. houses on fire. That's a real sight for us. Dave Malkoff, thank you so much for the update from the Panhandle tonight. And keeping in mind the, the loss of livestock out there, you know, on top of property, mm. livestock is a living for so Absolutely. many people out there.